You know, I don't know whether we can put it in terms of powerful, but they certainly uh, have a way to uh, easily work across borders and <clears throat> look at themselves as uh, global companies, global citizens, uh, and, uh, and they'll deal with whatever <clears throat> specificity there is in each country, either from a market point of view or from a legislation point of view, and they'll deal with it. And uh, <clears throat> the losers, the, the loser nations are those who are not going to make it easy for those companies to, to invest because they create jobs and they create, uh, they create uh, economic growth. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, as we said earlier, uh, when they look at this as an opportunity and not a threat, then they can win. If they try to protect their markets, protect their companies uh, from competition, they lose in the long term. Maybe nice from an electoral point of view in the short term, but they're going to lose in the long term. So uh, you, you, I don't think you can fight this. I think that the nation cannot fight the fact that global companies are expanding globally and will invest when, where, where they have a chance to uh, have a return. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, but I think you have to have a base because if you're US-based or French-based or German-based, whatever, Chinese-based, I think this is the anchor, this is the, the sort of the, what shapes the values of the company. I think it's very important to have a personality. And uh, <clears throat> so having said this, I, I, I think what companies are doing, which you see more and more, is that they have much more open boards than you used to have. Every company is trying to have the U.S. companies trying to have Europeans, Asians, Latin Americans, and so you're going to see, I think, diversity on boards ever increasing uh, to precisely sort of uh, represent all those differences at the top of the corporation. You're also seeing diversity in uh, executives' origins more and more. Uh, and something I was totally out of sight 30 years ago, you know, having a, a CEO from another country run a, a, a company in a different country is, is much more common now. And, and, and more important, other executives in the C-suite as well. So you're going to see more and more of that. Everybody has a role in Davos. Uh, <clears throat> the way uh, the way I see the role of corporation is that they are they are the the, uh, the the component that has to engage uh, into uh, into the dialogue and engage into driving some of the initiatives that we have, and the reason is that it's not only the fact that corporations have resources in terms of money, but they also have skills, competencies uh, that are, that are uh, critical to the success of those initiatives. I'll give you an example. We have launched in Davos uh, an initiative on water, because water is becoming a very big issue. Some could argue that it's a much bigger issue than oil because no one has found a real alternative to water, and it's unlikely that anybody will. And, and it's life. Water is life. Go to the Museum of Natural History here in New York, and water is life. So water is very important, and <clears throat> but it's uh, companies that I will not name, but companies that that are in a, in businesses that use a lot of water or for which water is a key ingredient in their products that have the vision and the wisdom to say, hey, this is something important. So, uh, so they engage themselves and sort of uh, with the, uh, the uh, typical you know, business approach, they, they, they want to look at some uh, an initiative like this and say, okay, what, for, what are the objectives? What is it trying to achieve? 
what are the milestones towards this? I mean, sort of a business approach to solving something. This is where business is a key role because they, they have greater ability. And maybe I'm biased because I come from business, but they have greater ability to achieve results. And they have a greater results orientation, at least, let's put it this way, by the nature of what they are uh, <clears throat> than any other groups in society. When we say global, we cannot just always think there's only, there's only one thing. Global is everything. You know, and particularly water is also very local. In other words, the water issues in Central Asia or the water issues in, uh, in China are different. Or in, so they're different different parts of the world. Uh, and uh, so you have to look, in my view, at sort of the the sub the subsystem that is that where water is critical, and it can be a, a geopolitical topic between uh, countries that have to share the same uh, water source. Uh, <clears throat> So that's one air, that's one 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 focus, and in that particular case, you know, you want to manage these resources well and equitably. So that's one issue. When it comes to uh, so other regions, we'll have a different approach to the different issues related to water on a global basis. So can you govern this on a global basis? Uh, I don't know. I think that that's. That is a, a, a complicated uh, objective, but we are embarked. We just started this initiative, so we will address exactly that. You know, we we'll say, okay, what what are the key issues? How can they be dealt with? And should there be a segmentation in these water issues? For example, the water issues, the water for agriculture, is an issue in itself. Okay, uh, agriculture consumes seventy percent of water. So main use of water goes to agriculture. Uh, is there a better way to uh, manage water for agriculture than there is today? So that's one segment of it. Uh, is there a better way to use water in manufacturing processes? That's a different uh, topic. So I think what you need is to identify those, those subgroups sub and work on those see what progress you can make. Now, I don't think you need an overall government to do this because that's more bureaucracy. What you need is uh, 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 stakeholders uh, who, of that particular subsystem who get together and say, let's, let's address this. So you need, if it is water for agriculture, you, you, need, you need whoever has to you know, stake in this issue and, and, and participate in this issue to uh, work on it. Uh, so again here, this is the multi-stakeholder approach because you're going to need government, you're going to need uh, certainly agriculture, uh, the whole, uh, the whole uh, uh, field of uh, people who deal with agriculture from putting the seed in the ground to delivering uh, the donut, uh, uh, you know, to the consumer. There's a whole chain here. So uh, just going to have to deal with that as, as an entity to, to try to deal with it. So I think it's a lot of those government governance systems that have to be established amongst the stakeholders to address the various segments of that issue. <laughs>